Hey people, welcome to The Run Testers. And in this video, I'm gonna whip you through some of my top shoes of 2023. Now we test hundreds of shoes each year, and the truth be told, most of them now are of a pretty high standard. But there are some shoes that really stand out and appeal to the way that we run as individuals. Now, in general, I tend to prefer firmer, more immediate, responsive rides rather than big pillowy, sinky sort of daily trainers. You know, things that put a lot of shoe on the foot. I like things that are more precise, stripped back, minimal rather than big hulking great kind of shoes. More Cloud Surfer 7 really than the Nike Invincible 3, I guess is the way to sum it up. I like to feel connected to the ground. I enjoy shoes that protect my feet and legs on long miles, but I don't attempt to make the ground disappear altogether. I like shoes that let you know what's going on underfoot and sort of encourage you to have a faster foot turnover. So with that in mind, without further ado, let's get into the shoes that I've really loved this year. These are the shoes that have struck a chord with the way that I run and the way that I race. So here are my top picks for 2023. Now the On Cloud Surfer 7 is one of those shoes that I find really easy to pick out of my pile of shoes for a wide range of runs. It's one that I found myself going back to a lot since we first tested it. It's compact, it's light on the foot, it's agile, it's pretty nimble, and I think it's a fun, well-balanced shoe with decent versatility. They're noticeably softer than many on shoes. That was a big difference, it was one of the things we liked about it. There's good cushioning that avoids feeling too sinky and flaccid. It's softer and less snappy than the new Cloud Eclipse that we've just tested. And I think actually the Eclipse will likely replace the Surfer as my favorite on shoe and in my rotation. But if we're talking about shoes that I've been using most this year, the Surfer 7 has been a regular choice for me. And overall, I think the new midsole kicks in with return just at the right time for smooth transitions. The stability is okay for me too. I don't need stability shoes, but I found that a pretty reliable platform to run off. I actually used this shoe to run 30 miles of a 100 mile ultra in Berlin this year, so that'll tell you how much I trusted it. At 150 pounds, it's a touch pricier than some of the rivals in this space, but in terms of value, I think it ticks all the important boxes of offering great versatility. And it's definitely a happy choice for easy runs, but also I found it could cope with faster efforts too. For me, this is the kind of shoe you can stick in your suitcase and take on holiday to take care of most of your running whilst you're away. Now I'm only halfway into my testing of the Ride 17 here for the Run Testers full review. We've got a first run video up on the channel right now though if you're interested, but it's safe to say that I've fallen for this shoe from that very first run. It's been a while since I enjoyed a shoe straight out of the box quite like I enjoyed this one. I think there's excellent instant disappearing step in comfort. I like the roomy uppers that you've got. I like the balanced heel and tongue padding that happens here on the shoe. It's not overdone, but it's nice and comfortable. The midsole now has a big, big, but not entirely max stack uh, wedge of the livelier Power Run Plus foam. It's the same foam that you'll find in the Triumph 21, but there's two mils less of it in the heel. So what you've got here is a slightly heavier lower drop shoe that's very similar to the Triumph 21. It offers a really good ride that balances cushioned landings with a rolling response and I think springy energy. For me, it's one of those shoes that just feels immediately quite natural. It's not entirely effortless, uh, it's not giving you loads and loads back like some super daily trainers, but it's just very easy to move in, whether you're moving slow and easy or you're pushing things slightly more up tempo. On the miles I've done so far, it coped with my marathon pace nicely and was cushioned and protective at slower recovery paces as well. Now, this is a shoe that I think is a fantastic all-rounder. It's a good value workhorse daily trainer and another shoe that I'd happily stick in my suitcase for a two-week holiday to cover all my runs. It's also cheaper than the Triumph 21, and it's definitely earned a place very quickly in my affections and in my rotation. So Hoka's range topping carbon racer, the Rocket X2, I think is a brilliantly well-balanced shoe. And this shoe has undoubtedly helped Hoka to close the gap on the best super shoes this year. I love this as a speedy option over the half marathon distance, but I also think it has enough energy, stability and versatility to eat a range of paces and distance is a really good training shoe as well. For me, the shoe almost feels like the Vaporfly 2, and now that Nike has made the Vaporfly 3 much softer, this could be the shoe you go to if you like that stiffer, firmer ride that you got from the Vaporfly 2, that kind of all-out kind of raciness. What you get in this overhaul shoe is a new, higher stack, dual-density P-Burr midsole that puts a softer layer of foam closer to the foot and a firmer, more responsive layer on the bottom. There's a tweaked, spoon-shaped carbon plate sandwiched in between there for extra leverage. And that works with an early stage Meta Rocker midsole to help you roll through your strides with really good efficiency. Now up top, 
one bit wasn't so keen on, you've got seriously snug synthetic mesh uppers and gusseted tongues. And one word of caution here, these might be a bit narrow and troublesome if you've got wider feet. They come up small and a bit fussy, and the fit may be an issue for some, but if you like it tighter and dialed in for your race fit, you'll get it here. On the outsole, the durability and the grip is taken care of by some strategically placed rubber in the high impact zones. That looks nice and durable in the tests that I've done. And overall, I really think this is an excellent carbon race option that I've been happily racing in and doing faster work in it as well. I don't know whether I'd go to the full marathon quite. I think my favorite distance has been the half marathon in it, but it's great for intervals as well. It's great for sessions where you know you're gonna to wanna to push it and do short intervals. It's just been a really happy shoe to run in and I think sort of now cocked back to some of the older carbon races. Next, I've got the Socony Endorphin Elite. Now this isn't necessarily my favorite carbon racer. I think the Accolade probably goes to the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 or maybe the Adidas Primex 2 Strung. But the Alpha was launched last year, so that can't be on the list. And I've not found myself using the X2 Strung as much as I have done the Elite over this past year. And I've got the Socony Endorphin Elite on my list here because it cuts a slightly different path than the likes of the Alpha Fly, the Adios Pro, the Vaporfly 3. For me, this is a capable carbon racer that balances energy and propulsion and response with a touch more stability than those carbon plate rivals. And because it's a bit more controlled, I found it nicely versatile. I ran a solo 50 kilometer, 30 odd miles, in a, in a one mile tunnel up and down in the darkness this year. I've done intervals, marathon pace training runs and half marathons and it's always delivered in terms of overall comfort and that speed when I want it. The midsole uses a new power run HT foam. The HT stands for hydrogen. It's Socrates most energy efficient foam to date. There's also a foot long carbon plate that delivers the stiffness from heel to toe and there's an aggressive toe spring here and Socrates speed roll overall geometry to help create an efficient roll through that really works for me. You get a quite a lively toe off here as well. And it's just 7.5 ounces. I love the fact that it's one of the lightest racers going. In part, it's due to these kind of thin and slightly fussy uppers I'm not so keen on. There's lots of cutouts to kind of save weight. But what stands out for me is that ride underfoot. It's how the Endorphin Elite manages to be light and racy without feeling too unstable, stripped back and exposed. The running platform for me is sort of just about got the right amount of protection. That means I was able to rely on it when my form got ragged on that longer ultra. It might not be as punchy as the Alpha Fly, but it's as good, I think, an option for chasing marathon PRs. And even Road Ultras, I wish it was just a bit cheaper, maybe 30 bucks or so off the price, and it would have been a real contender this year. It is still very expensive. Now, it's been a while since I've been excited about a Merrill shoe, but the Agility Peak 5 Road to Trail shoe is a really accomplished trail shoe. I've loved running the kind of lighter off-roads that I tend to tackle here in the UK in these shoes. So you think about kind of parks, grass, muddy river paths, and not anything technical and steep, but that kind of thing. I'm a big fan of the Hoka Speed Goat 5 as well, and I think this has all the necessary tools to rival the Goat, particularly on rolling road to trail terrain. The Agility Peak 5 has a lot going for it. It's a really nicely balanced, cushioned and protective trail shoe. And it has that Speed Goat style, easy rolling ride for longer endurance efforts too, where you need a bit of extra foot protection but you don't wanna be lugging hulking great trail shoes along for the ride. This is a great option for those. And I'm very happy ticking along in this for long hours on feet. It's got that long run ultra comfort. And next time I'm taking on day long trail ultra, it's likely to be my choice of shoe to tackle. Now the ride is excellent too. You get a nicely balanced ride for a midsole that's softer and more cushioned and protective than we had in the Agility Peak 4. There's really good roll through, plenty of energy clipping along compacted trails. The midsole soaks up the road happily too, thanks to that well-cushioned midsole. It's just a comfortable ride overall. Though on the trail, the bigger stack might not suit runners who like to feel a little bit more ground contact and connection to the trail underfoot. It does dull it out a little bit because there is a bit of a sizable stack here. I mean, when you hit lumpier ground, there's still good stability, I think, and you can move across most terrain in these shoes with confidence. Now it's well built with robust durability too, which is a biggie for trail shoes. And there are some really nice details that I like here. I like you've got the wraparound tongue that fits comfortably. There's a D-ring here that lets you um, fiddle with your laces hold. There's a gaiter attachment at the back. Now, if you're thinking of taking on the Marathon de Sobs, I said this in the other review that we did of this, this could be a contender shoe for that or anything sort of dry and flat, um, hard packed um, that you might be running as ultras. Now, 140 pounds, it's also pretty keenly priced really. It's a bit pricier than the Peg Trail 4 in the UK. It comes in at the same as the Speedgoat. But if you're in the US, you'll be able to pick this up cheaper than the Speedgoat 5. And to me, that makes it even more appealing. 
Uh, if you're considering a Speedgoat style trail shoes, then I definitely have a check of this one. I'm really enjoying it. It's been a surprise from Merrill. Haven't really found Merrill shoes that I've liked, but yeah, I'm, I'm massively enjoying it. It's a big thumbs up from me. And uh, yeah, I think it sort of puts Merrill back into that competition with some of the more popular trail shoes. I would be surprised if I didn't see this on lots of trail races in the future. So this is the Merrill Agility Peak 5. It's a big win for Road to Trail. So there you have it. That has been a whip through of five of my favorite shoes launched in 2023. How many do you agree with? How many do you hate? None, some. I'd love to hear what your top fives are. Tell me why I'm wrong. I'm sure you will anyway. But hit me up in the comments below with all of that, with your picks. And if you want to see what Tom chose, his video will be appearing on the channel just about now. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this video. Thanks as ever for spending your time with us. We really appreciate when you do that. Uh, yeah, over and out. Happy running, everyone.